Hello, John McConnell here with UpsideDownRealEstate.com. Um, I'm an attorney. I am a, as a broker, I own McConnell and Company Realty, and uh, we get asked questions about how to protect your people's assets all the time. Um, it can be complicated. Uh, I look, I frame it in in a couple ways. I first say, well, before people can go after your assets, they have to get a judgment. Before they can get a judgment, they have to have a right to get a judgment. And when we're talking about upside down real estate and loans that are still being paid or uh, at least not foreclosed upon, you know, that's a chance we have to eliminate the lender's or the creditor's ability to get to your other assets because we're not, because we are going to try to prevent them from getting the right to have a judgment against you. So when you've got an upside down property, you recognize you're 100, 200, 300 thousand dollars or more, maybe upside down. What's the first thing you should be thinking about? Well, is there a way I can make this property, this asset work for me? That, to me, sounds like a potential loan modification. You might want to see if the banks will reduce your um, principal or your payments to a level that you find palatable um, because it's obviously not good asset protection if you're losing money every month into a market that uh, the politicians could mess up three, four months from now when cash truly will be king. Um, so it might not be good to be spending your last 100000 or your last 10000 or what's in your retirement account on an asset that has been uh, so eroded because uh, the banking system was so poorly run. Um, secondly, the next way to look at it is how do people have a right to go after your other assets? Well, first, they have to have a judgment and they have to execute upon it. One way to avoid that is don't give them a right to get a judgment against you. So that category for us when we're dealing with upside down properties is your loan workout scenario. Um, what, what for the sake of these talks should we talk, consider in a loan workout scenario? Well, one loan workout would be accepting a foreclosure. It might not traditionally be called a workout, but that's certainly one of the things you need to consider. Two, a short sale. Three, a loan mod. Um, four, a short pay on one or both of your loans which there's always short pays at the end of workouts except for a foreclosure but I'm talking about where you use a strategy in which you try to gain leverage over the lender and then you offer them a few cents on the dollar which can happen particularly in seconds if you are current with your first okay so the whole point of your loan workout is to analyze what happens at the end of a particular path and whether that will leave you immune from a deficiency judgment uh, for many people with loans, one loan, or if they purchase money loans, there's a good chance if they if they uh, if they accept a foreclosure, they could be immune from future from future collections on that debt. Uh, 726, the one action rule says when lenders go quickly, when they use the non-judicial manner, because they're going more quickly than if they went judicial, they waive their right to the deficiency. 580B also has protections in it for uh, people of the original loans on their residence. There are exceptions to all those rules, but you can use those those laws to try to insulate yourself from the bank get, having a right to collect on their deficiency, the deficiency being the remaining, remaining loan balance. You can also, if either you don't want a foreclosure on your record or a foreclosure is going to leave you open to a sold-out junior or a recourse loan who then has a right to come after you for all the money that you owe, uh, then you look at Short sales. Short sales, if you negotiate a written release in language that you find acceptable or your, your advisor, your attorney finds acceptable, you there may be released from the deficiency. Uh, when it gets a little more tricky is when a foreclosure might not be so good for you and yet the bank will not release you from a deficiency. Let's say you get a uh, release letter like you get from Bank of America. In the, you can see copies of those on UpsideDownRealEstate.com. There, the bank reserves the right to collect the deficiency, or the bank leaves it ambiguous. Um, what are you going to do then? Well, first you say, the foreclosure, does foreclosure help me? And it may not. Then you're saying, well, is the short sale going to be better than the foreclosure? It may be, because you can take, you can go ahead and do that. You may wish to go ahead and do that short sale, and then let the bank come after you later. And when the bank's coming after you later, you may be able to avail yourselves of some of the anti-deficiency laws. You may say, hey, bank, you already had your election. Hey, bank, you uh, the doctrine of merger applies here to block your right to come after me. 
Hey, bank, you put out a very ambiguous um, approval letter, and the courts aren't going to allow you to collect on that letter. Or finally, you might reassert some of your other claims that you had before. You might say, hey, bank, you're, you're just creating a great fraud here. You can't even prove that you have a right to collect on this. You know, that note, it was destroyed when it was syndicated, when, the, when that loan was, in, was pus pushed into syndication, and you have no right to try to collect from me now. Um, sometimes some of those defenses might be available in foreclosure. They may also be available in short sale. Before you do your short sale, make sure you have your approvals and letters read so you're not waiving any of these potential defenses if you need them. Make sure an attorney knows what he's doing. Is checking out your file. Um, we will talk further on other days about other ways to insulate yourself from the bank, bank's right to go after you for the remaining loan balance. And then later, we, we might even get into some anti-deficiency, no, I'm, I'm sorry, we may even get into some asset protection strategies. Thanks, bye.